Welcome to the Nord Pentecostal Church live stream, a place to be family. Good morning, everyone. Causing myself to ring. It's great to see everyone. We've been away a couple of weeks, and I hear you had uh, some good speakers come in. I, I understand that a professional basketball player, Charles Barkley, showed up at one point. <laughs> Got to make fun of Jack when I can. Uh, it, it's, it's just nice to know that uh, things covered well, and I hear everything went seamlessly, so that was amazing. I am happy to be back. It's good to be back in uh, what we consider home, so it's, it's nice to be around again. We have a special announcement this morning. I'm going to invite Liz to come, and she's going to, you're going to share, right? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to um, put out an invitation to our ladies. It does not matter what age you are. I'm telling you that uh, when we get together, the Lord shows up, and it's so sweet. And especially if you haven't been in church in a while or you're new here, I just want to let you know that we want you to join us. Um, what the Lord has placed on our hearts is um, prepare, 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 a preparation of the heart. And it comes from uh, 2 uh, Timothy about um, a charge that Paul gives to be ready in and out of season to to encourage and to rebuke and to build up as we see the eminent return of the Lord. And I'll tell you right now, he's not sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe he's standing at the right hand of the Father. And we need to be equipped and filled with his joy and every good gift that he has from the Father of lights. So I just really want to encourage you. There's, um, it's September the 23rd to the 25th. Um, and uh, there is uh, rock climbing for anyone that wants to. It's included in the price, but it's really, really fun. We stow away, we laugh, we cry, we worship, and so I think I better stop right there. Bless you, and just know that every one of you ladies are encouraged to come, all right? Thank you. You were okay. I wasn't reaching for the mic yet. <laughs> Why don't we stand together this morning? We're going we're gonna to start in prayer and uh, just begin to cry out to God in worship, believing that he will move. I, I want to say something that we often come into this place with the expectancy that God will move in deep, incredible ways, and that's not a bad thing. We should believe that God will do miracles, that he will move like he showed himself in the Bible and raid right up to now that those things are active and that they will happen. But I want you to be aware that in those still moments, in those simple moments, God still moves. We can come expecting the big, but please do not miss the simple that often are the most life-changing for us because they're so continuous. So be on watch for both of those as you worship today, that God is moving strong, but he's also moving in the simple. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you were here long before we walked in these doors. That overnight your spirit began to saturate this place to welcome us into your presence. So Lord, we invite you today to move in this room. In both those profound, incredible ways, but also the simple, that we don't miss it. That we are aware that you are doing something in each one. Holy Spirit, we are open to your move today. Come and be among us. You are welcome here. In Jesus' name. Let's praise his name this
Father, we exalt you in this place. We're thankful, Lord, that whatever is in our lives, whatever the circumstance, you are not phased by it. You are not threatened by anything. You are not surprised by anything. Father, that brings you, in that we bring you glory. I pray over each one in this room, Lord, as we sang that song, Peace Be Still, that there would be peace in their life, wherever it is necessary, wherever it is felt that peace needs to be, that you would surround them and bring peace. Continue to pray for Kim and Mossy's family and friends. God, the beautiful faith that Mossy held assured him of a place standing in your incredible presence for all of eternity. For those left behind, we will grieve. But we will see him again as we have faith. Father, I pray you bless this time in your word and that it would speak to each one. In your incredible name, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We'll dismiss the children to head off to both preschool, if they're not already there, and into Super Church. And as they go, I wanted to tell you why I asked the team to go back to I Exalt Thee. As we sang that song, Peace Be Still, it occurred to me that at the moments of Jesus' life when he was filled with the most uh, sense of anxiety or uh, the unknown times when he's out in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, when he's in the garden praying and sweat like blood comes from his face. What he's doing in those moments by quoting scripture, by crying out to God, is exalting him. It looks like he is not doing that, that he's defending or that he's trying to get out of it, but he's exalting God in those moments. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Do not test the Lord your God. He is exalting his Father. And so when we need peace, we should pray, but we should do so in the knowledge that we are doing it while exalting God, while lifting his name up because he is able and he is worthy. Not just to cry out and say, God, I just need peace right now, please bring it, but do it in a form of worship. Because I find often in my life that when we do that, when we cry out in that sense of worship, that's when I feel God moves the most. At least for me, from my experience, that's where I feel that he moves in those moments. Totally not part of my sermon. But I wanted to explain why we went back to that. This morning we're actually going to talk about baptism. Because in a couple of weeks we are going to have baptism service. Um... That whole weekend, we're calling Homecoming Weekend. We did one last year, but we did it just on the Sunday. This year, we're doing two days. We're doing Saturday. That is a community event. We're asking you to, um, to invite your friends, your neighbors, whatever it is around our area, Norwood, Hastings, Campbellford, those areas where you come from, um, not to steal from other churches. Invite those you know who don't attend right now. Maybe they've been attending somewhere, but they stopped, or who have not attended a church, to the Saturday event we're going to have a bar, uh, not a barbecue, sorry. We're going to have cotton candy and an ice cream bar, which is just going to be splendid because ice cream is not messy whatsoever and neither is cotton candy, right? So bring your kids and eat the ice cream in front of them. <laughs> we're going to have that. We're going to have the bounce houses set up. We're going to have a movie uh, as the darkness begins to set so we can actually see the movie. And then we're going to conclude with a very brief... Uh, firework display. Now, when I say brief, I, I'm not ashamed of it because on our holidays, we went to Niagara Falls and every night they promise you this spectacular firework display at 10 o'clock. And so at 10, like 9.59, Heidi and I, in the hotel room, you can see where the fireworks are at the falls. Can't see the falls, but you can see the fireworks. So at 9.59, we stand at the window and right at 10 o'clock, they start. And at 10.04, they're done. So we have maybe five minutes, which will go past what Niagara Falls does every night. (laughs) So it'll be good. But it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a community event. So please invite your friends and neighbors to come and have fun with us. And then on Saturday, it's, it's an event to celebrate us as a church. 
Uh, you done the corn boil. We're doing the corn boil, but we're also doing barbecue. We're doing some other things in there. But it's Baptism Sunday. And that's the emphasis of the weekend for us, is Baptism Sunday, September 11th. We have other things around it, but that's the big deal. We want to make sure that it's understood that when we gather on September 11th, there'll be a short little message. There'll be a barbecue after. But we're going to celebrate those who go through the water in that act of faith. That they display this outward, I am a follower, and I'm showing you publicly that I am this. The emphasis of that day is baptism. So today, we're going to walk through that, what it means and why we still do those things. Show the biblical example of Jesus in the, uh, and why the church still has a part of this practice. I'll give you the big idea, like the big reason behind this sermon. Baptism is a very important moment in your faith. That's the big idea behind this sermon today. Before we go into the message, I want to take a moment because one of our members, one of our, our younger members, that got baptized a while ago um, in, down in Calvary in, in Peterborough, and we need to celebrate that. We have the video and we have a photo I want you to see. They're not going to be put on screen, and I think I missed him. He's gone off to, to Super Church, but um, Jeremiah got baptized uh, and at Calvary where his dad attends, and we're going to watch the video, and we're going to celebrate him after, and then he'll hear it, and we'll explain to him. His mom will say, we clapped for you, because it is a celebration of that testimony of faith. So if we can play that video. This passage, uh, John the Baptist is out. He's baptizing people according to their confession of faith, and he takes these people into the water and he baptizes them and then along comes Jesus and he wants to be baptized and so at this moment this is where we pick up starting in verse 13 of Matthew 3 so then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John but John tried to deter him saying I need to be baptized by you and do you come to me and Jesus replied let it be so now it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I, am, um, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the incredible biblical model of Jesus being baptized. The one who, John is right, who should be baptizing others, comes into the waters to be baptized by his forerunner, the one who prophesied the coming of the Messiah. For those unfamiliar, John the Baptist is known as the last Old Testament prophet, the one who was foretelling of all events to come. Prophecy changed a little bit after that and became more of a foretelling what God has already told us and proclaiming that boldly. To the, to the nations. In this moment, it's interesting to see because Jesus enters the water, one who is without sin, who did not need to repent. And what John the Baptist was saying was, baptism is a show that you have decided to repent of your sin. And along comes the sinless one and enters the water. And John says, no, 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 you need to baptize me. And Jesus says, no, this needs to happen to fulfill all righteousness. Now, that, that's a little tripping point. This is the only thing I'm going to talk about in this passage. It's a little tripping point because people in other denominations have taken this and said, in this moment, when Jesus says to fulfill all righteousness, that's Jesus saying, if you're not baptized, you're not a Christian. But that's not the case. See, baptism is very important, but I want you to know that it's actually not necessary as a measure of faith. It does not make you saved. Baptism is a public display of what's happened inside your life, inside your heart. Jesus entering the waters and say, fulfilling all righteousness, is his decision to say, I want to stand here in the water, be baptized by you, John, the one who has gone before me, to affirm that you are the one who has gone before the Messiah, but also in this moment that the Father will come and affirm me, Jesus, saying this, in who I am to be. Those few words fulfill all righteousness, three words, are Jesus saying, this is my act of being set apart and committing myself to the full plan of God that is about to take place in my life. I will not walk away from anything he's asking me to do. 
those three words mean all of that. And it's very interesting because people have said, oh, if you're not baptized, you're not saved. No, that's not true. If you're not baptized, you just haven't publicly declared it through water. You might have said it, you might have lived it, but you just didn't do it through the water. That's all it is. But I still say it's a very important thing. And so we're going to take the rest of this morning, which isn't going to be a horribly long time, and a lot of people are going, thank you. My prayers were answered today. I just got back from holidays, and I don't have, I have a lot of energy, but I, don't, I, uh, I feel like it's right to just say the necessary and not go off my notes. Just stay on my notes. So after this moment, John continues to baptize those who come and declare faith. So we're going to answer a couple of questions and walk through why the church still does it. And that last slide can go up now. So why, why be baptized? Why does it matter to be baptized if it's not necessary for your faith? Why should we be baptized? Why does the church still take part in these things if it's not something that really matters? Well, this is, this is something that does matter. It doesn't matter to the extension that it, it doesn't make you saved, but it matters because it's a public confession. Jesus set the model. As he entered the waters in Matthew 3 and the other Gospels talk about it, he set the model for all followers that we would be baptized just as he is. Let's face it, if the one who was sinless, who knew no sin, walked into the waters of baptism, all people who follow him should. We should do just as he did. But it's also the model the apostles set. As you walk through um, Romans and Acts and the, other, the, the, the letters to the churches and other areas, it talks about baptism. It shows that baptism happens. It's something that is important, and the apostles knew this is a model that we need to be, make sure stays in practice. Jesus actually told us in Matthew 28, go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's our action. When we disciple someone, we then baptize them. It's an outward expression, as I said, of an inward change that has happened to you. The inward change being I accepted Jesus and now I am different. The old is gone, the new has come. You are a new creation. There's a lot of scripture we can put in there to express what it means. But it's the outward display. It's the I am entering the water right now as who I was, but I'm coming out with that image of I am new. In that video, when, he, when Jeremiah entered the water and came back out, that was that, that physical display to you that what he was is now different. It's the outward display of what's going on inside of us, of how our spirit is becoming new and invigorated every single day. It also shows others of your intention to serve Jesus. When Jesus entered and he said, I'll fulfill all righteousness, he was committing to serve God with all that he had, to not put anything on the side. Baptism is our display to you that the person entering the water will follow Jesus with all that they are. I am committing my life to serve my Savior. It's also a commitment to your community of believers. Now, obviously, that community can change because we do move at times. The place I was baptized at when I was 17 is not here. That community of believers there, some of them have moved from the church. Um, some of them have died. But I was baptized not just to that community, but to the community of believers. So I was, I was brought into the whole family. When you were baptized, you were brought into the whole family. It was done so in front of one specific people group, but it's to all of us. So I belong to you in that sense, because in that I am your brother. Now, interestingly, as an introvert, anyone else an introvert? I'm not an extreme introvert, but there were parts of my life where I definitely was. I'm kind of coming past that. But as an introvert, that sense of, wait, I need to commit to a community that can be a little bit daunting. That can be one of those like, wait, wait a second. You're asking me to commit to a dozen or a hundred or 200 and some churches, a couple thousand people. That I have to say I'm going to be a part of their lives all the time. 
I want you to understand that's not what it means. It means that you are committing to the community of faith that you are a follower of Jesus, just like those who have been baptized before you and who are coming. You are committing to the faith that we all share alike. We'll talk about what that means in a moment. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But we can sometimes as introverts think, well, we can be a community locally. Like my little family group and my friends, that's great. I don't need any more. But then you talk about the church and the greater body and it can become that like, I don't know, millions of people? As an introvert, that's like, okay, nope, not, not going to do that. But by no means is baptism asking you to stand in front of millions of people. It's telling you that you now belong to that community. That you now have these incredible numbers backing you up and that should be your strength. To have that many people on your side, a part of the team, ready and willing to stand by you at all moments. The second reason may be that someone, second, sorry, the second reason that you may think, well, I don't know if I want to commit to the community of faith. Maybe because somebody in your direct local community of faith who says they're a believer is not very nice. Maybe their kindness does not represent Jesus well because they're just not kind. Maybe they're overly harsh. They're critical. Maybe sometimes, you know the saying, speak truth in love and how important that is to faith? Because if we don't speak truth in love and we just share truth, it becomes brutal. And sometimes maybe we lose the love part. And we might look and say, but if you were baptized, I don't want to be that same representation. I don't want to be associated in that manner. Now I want to speak to that and I'll handle the second part of it in a moment as I will with the other area. Again, the community should be our, our strength. And if you don't want to associate with that person, this is for you. I understand that. I know where you're coming from. We're going to talk about accountability in a moment, but first I want to speak to you if you feel this way. I don't want to associate with somebody who treats others harshly. Your faith is your own. It's not theirs. Their faith is their own. It's not yours. You share in the same faith. You are a part of the community of faith. But you don't have the same measure of faith and the same responsibility to their faith as you do yourself. It says work out your salvation. Not work out your wife's or your husband's. Not work out the person sitting on the other side of the church. It says work out your salvation with reverence to God. I know it says fear and trembling, but you do it in reverence to God. And when we stand and say, God, I don't want to be baptized or be associated of faith with that individual, we are not revering God in that moment. We're not glorifying him because we're not being baptized into the community of people. We're being baptized into the community of God. That's a difference. We are honoring God in that decision. So baptism is not so much about the people, even though we are part of that community as it is bringing absolute honor to God. This is the faith I carry. You have instilled it in me. You have built it up. You have made it new and fresh every day. And I honor you by entering these waters and showing I'm giving you my all. It's your salvation. There will be people who are harsh, who are brutal, who are not kind. But you don't answer to them and they don't answer to you. They answer to God and so do you. Baptism is about honoring God and what he has done in your life and following the model that Jesus has given us. At the end of all things, all of us will stand before God and give account for every hurtful thing that we say and do. In declaring that you are a follower of Jesus, you are accountable to God, that you are a follower, and you are accountable for how you do so. So let's talk about accountability. Because I said part of that you know, we might not want to get baptized because we don't want to associate with somebody. And again, I understand that, but I don't think that's a valid reason. I really don't. I think we need to drop that. Just being brutal. We need to let that go. Accountability is strong because we are accountable to God for what we say and do. And I think that when we make the decision to follow and we publicly make that display, he shares a measure of his glory to us. He honors us in return for honoring him. 
But we have to, I have to tell you that we, be the, we then become accountable to one another. You don't answer to the person, but you become accountable in this way. At one time when you weren't a Christian, we prayed for you that salvation would come that it would rest on you. There were incredible words of faith and the need for salvation shared from this pulpit yesterday by many people. And it was heard by many people. The the, the homegoing, the celebration of a beloved man, the gospel was preached in boldness. And we pray for those who don't know Jesus that they would come to know. But when you get saved and we see the, the physical representation by baptism, we change the way we pray. We no longer pray that you would be saved. We now pray that God would manifest in you, that he would use you, that you would know your call and your value and the fullness of him within you and upon you, that you would know all that he has measured for you and that it would become real in your life. We change the way that we pray for you when we see that physical show. Because you can attend church your whole life and not be a follower, but when you get baptized, we assume that that means, well, you're a follower now. We're not praying for your salvation anymore. We're praying that you see what God has desired of you and you follow him to the fullest. But here's where the accountability structure begins to work with us. We do become accountable to one another. Not that we answer to that person because we answer to God, but we become accountable in the sense that when we know somebody is a Christian, in love, in friendship, if sin enters into their life and it becomes something that's habitual and it really, you see them begin to, to kind of wander away. We have the commandment of Jesus, of the apostles, to kindly approach that person and share in love the truth of what is happening in their life. Never to do it in brutality, never to do it in a measure of critical nature, but to do so in the knowledge of encouragement. It's always to be done in encouragement. Listen, I know that you were baptized, you had a confession of faith, but I want to tell you, I see something in your life that doesn't measure up to that faith. And I want to encourage you that I'm going to stand and pray with you. I'm going to be that person to make sure that your faith is strong. I'm going to surround you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to make sure that your faith becomes evident in your life again. And that this does not set you back. Encourage in the correction. That's the accountability. But it's also the knowledge that if you do that, it's also you saying, I am open to that being done for me. That somebody will keep me accountable and keep me in the faith and on my journey so that I don't go wandering off somewhere that God does not want me. That's how we become accountable to one another. So the next question then, when do we get baptized? Here's a very simple answer. Are you a believer who has not been baptized? Get baptized September 11th. No, I'm, like I'm serious about it because we do set these things like, oh, I think I'm just not ready. My faith isn't at the right moment. Which is interesting because when you read through the New Testament, the apostles would go and they would preach about salvation and, you know, like no sinner's prayer, no I'm raising my hand and coming to the front. The person would just go, I want that. Okay, well, repent and believe. Drop your sin act. Get rid of it. Believe that you need Jesus and without him you are a lost sinner who's going to hell. And follow him. And here's a stream, let me dunk you. There was no like seven parts of following before we baptize you. It was, you're a believer, you confess your faith, let's put you in the water. You saw that with Philip in the Ethiopian eunuch, right? Like, I mean, miraculous moment too, the fact that he baptizes the the Ethiopian and then he appears 50 miles away seconds later. But it was at that moment that the Ethiopian understood what faith is and who Jesus is and Philip baptizes him and he's gone. And that happened repeatedly. So if you are a believer and you have not been baptized, you should get baptized September 11th. Like if we add one up here constantly, I would say we would just have it open every week when people would come and say, I want to be baptized. Okay, let me ask you like three questions to make sure you understand what baptism is and why you're doing it, that you are a Christian, and let's get it going. 
We don't need seven years and seven acts and all of this stuff. We need to just understand, I am a follower. Jesus told me I should be baptized. I'm going to do it. That's all it takes. That's, that's what we need to enter into the water. We do have, as a church, we do have a questionnaire that we ask, but what that does is it tells us when you were saved, why you understand, that you understand baptism, and that it is playing out, that faith is playing out in your life. There's other questions like your name and your age and stuff, but that's just for us. But it really just shows that we know, understand you're a believer and that you understand baptism. You want to get baptized? You come and say, Pastor Larry, Pastor Jack, Pastor Solomon, Jamie. I won't call him Pastor Jamie because he doesn't really like it, but he's, Jamie's a pastor. Someday he'll accept it. You want to get baptized, just say it. Just tell us. Let's, let's get that in motion. Because we want to celebrate. But on that, the next one is, did I wait too long? Did I wait too long to get baptized? Is my child too young to be baptized? Is age an issue when it comes to baptism? Did you wait too long? Let's say you got saved in 1958, you're still not baptized. Did you wait too long? No. September 11th. That's, that's just the way it should be. The next available moment, that's when I'm doing it. And the next available moment really could be every week if you tell us and we say, okay, we're going to find a place to do it. We won't go dig a hole in the ice in the middle of January <laughs> down at Percy's place, but we will find somewhere warm that we can do a baptism. We just want to celebrate the public expression that you are a Christian and a follower and that you are committed to the community of faith because it's your faith that matters the most. And we'll hold you to that kindly and in love, but also in truth, to make sure that we do what is right unto God. Did you wait too long? No, but do it soon. Don't keep waiting. Don't keep making excuses. Walk in faith and be baptized. Now, the age issue with children. True, we don't baptize babies, infants. It's not our practice. And the reason is, is because we understand the biblical model of baptism is one where you understand faith and confess it. It's not about dedication or, 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 or commitment of the child to God, but that they can physically say, I know who Jesus is. I know that without him, I am lost and I don't have eternity in heaven and I need him as a savior. When you can understand that and say it, and then you mean it, you can be baptized. So as a parent, if your child is seven and you go, no, they understand, we'll walk through that water. I know churches who do five-year-olds that understand. They know the Bible story of the gospel and what it means to them, and they've confessed faith. They understand repentance because it's been well explained, and they walk in it. I also know that there are some later in life who still don't understand and we work with them and we explain things and we walk through it. But we want to make sure that it's understood. That's the prerequisite. You're saved, you're a Christian, and you understand what baptism is. If you as a parent can say, my child absolutely knows and they can tell us about it, we'll baptize them. Now, if they're two and they only know a couple of words, or if they're younger and they only know a couple of words, or if they're, you know, whatever, it's always a conversation. But just be aware, age can be an issue the younger you go. But we'll talk to you as a parent to see where they're at. Now, before we conclude, and yes, I'm already there, I want to dispel one myth. We do not hold you under for a long time, <laughs> depending on your measure of sin. There's, there's a video that I got sent. Um, there, there's a video uh, that's, that's making its rounds out of, I, I think it's somewhere in Africa, that the pastor was kind of new to faith himself, 
And he was introducing the candidate for baptism and said, like, this man is, I think he was, like, in his 40s, and he's been a horrible, wretched sinner, and we're just going to, he's accepted Christ, and we're going to baptize him today. And he held him down and prayed for a good four minutes. (laughs) And you can see the feet and the hands thrashing, and I'm like, let the man, like, I'm panicking watching this video, already knowing he's okay, but I'm panicking. Let the man up, let the man up. And then this gasp, not of excitement, but of like, oh, I'm still alive. (laughs) What you saw in the video is what it is. It's on your confession of faith. We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Under fully up, quickly. There's there's no counting to three or ten or whoever old you are. It's down and up. That's all it is. So don't think we're going to just keep you there just in case. It's not the way it works. I'll ask the team to come back. And everyone said amen. (laughs) Baptism, though not necessary for your salvation, is a very important moment for a believer. It's symbolic of the welcoming to the family of faith. I believe all who follow Jesus should be baptized, but I will never force it on anybody. I won't force you to get into the water. And if you sign up and you say, I want to be baptized in the day of, you go, you know what, I'm not sure. I just, I'm I'm a little nervous about it. I'll encourage you, but if you really don't want to be there, I won't force it. It's a personal decision, but I do encourage you, if you've not been baptized, September 11th. I believe we all need to be. I believe it's a public thing that becomes an encouragement to others that becomes that knowledge of that person is a believer and they're going to make a difference. And we begin to pray for them in that manner. And if you have any questions about it, if you have other things we didn't cover today, just come and talk to me, talk to to Jack or Solomon or Jamie, and we'll walk you through what that is. And there are other pastors in our congregation that I don't point out, but there's a lot of them and our missionaries By all means, if you know who they are, you can ask them, what does this mean? What about that? How do I manage? We want to make sure that you understand it's it's valuable, it's important. And that yes, as a believer, you should, you should be baptized. Can we pray together? Father, I thank you for each one here. For all those who have been baptized, that they stepped into the water as an expression of their faith. And even though some might have been baptized and then wandered away and come back to faith, that baptism still stands as an acknowledgement that they have faith. So it holds strong. Lord, I thank you that it's an encouragement to each one that we are a family. We are accountable to each other, but we answer to you in the end. Our accountability to one another, Lord, is to keep our faith strong and progressive to you. And in the end, we'll stand before you and you'll tell us of the people we encouraged and you'll tell us the people who followed because of the way we lived our lives. Because of our baptism, maybe people will follow you. And Lord, for any today who are wondering about it, who want to, those who have already put their name in to be baptized, I pray that each one today would have the courage and the faith to stand up and say, I want to be baptized. They'll come to us and say, put my name on the list. Here's who I am. Here's when I was saved. I know what baptism is. That we can celebrate moment after moment after moment with each one who enters the water. And it can just be an absolute party as people come up in the symbolic representation that sin has been removed from their life. Lord, as we worship before we go today, I ask that you would fill this place with boldness of faith and with all of your glory. In Jesus' name.